All right, Jehovah's Sake, good evening, good evening, an incredible schos baruch Hashem to be able to do the daf together in Eretz Yisrael. So our, our plan in Eretz Hashem for this, uh, for this trip is we're going to try to stay at one day ahead. So tonight we're actually going to Eretz Hashem do Tuesday's daf, and then Eretz Hashem, then come tomorrow, we'll keep one day ahead. So that way Eretz Hashem, whereas the rest of the world will finish Meseches Kiddushin on Friday, Erev Shabbos, we will be Zoha Eretz Hashem to finish it here on Thursday in Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Hashem, and Halavai, all of our learning should just be a schus for our precious soldiers of the IDF, who should give them the O's and the Gvur to be successful in all of their missions, to come back to their families, B'Shalom, and of course, again, continue strength to our brothers and sisters in Eretz Yisrael as well, Halavai. Schus of our learning should provide a Geula and Shalom for all of Klav Yisrael. Amen. Well, so with that, let us, let us begin. So today, today, we're going to do pay. Right? No, we're going to do ayin tes. We're going to do ayin tes. Perfect. Good. So let's start. So 79, ayin tes. Let's start at the Mishnah on the beginning of ayin ches amud beis, 78b. So the Mishnah says as follows. Mishnah bito. So a person goes ahead, we'll call him Ruvain. So Ruvain goes ahead and gives Rishos, provides, provides permission to a shaliach, to an agent, to go ahead and effect kiddushin on behalf of Ruvain's daughter. So what happens? Vahalachu v'kidsha. So as Ruben went ahead and appointed a shaliach, what else does he do? He also goes ahead and decides to find a shidduch for his daughter himself. So now again, two people concurrently trying to affect kiddushin for the same person. Ruben for his daughter and Ruben's shaliach for his daughter. So what's the halacha? So I will say, and obviously, the, 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 where, where does the problem come up? The problem comes up if both of them are successful. So now again, Ruben was Makadesh, a man for his daughter, and the shaliach was Makadesh, a man for Ruben's daughter. So the shaila is obviously a woman can't be married to two men. So the shaila, of course, is so whose kiddushin is effective? So the Gemara says it's very simple. It's a matter of chronology. So again, Misha says it's a simple matter of chronology. Who got there first? Who affected the first act of kiddushin? So if the father, if the father found the shidduch first, then ultimately again his kiddushin works. If the shaliach found the shidduch, then ultimately again his kiddushin works. Okay, so what happens if we don't know? So here's what we know. We know father found the shidduch for the daughter, shaliach found the shidduch for the daughter. What we don't know is who did it first. So then what's the halacha? Says the Gemara of Mishnah, Tapa Bayin Tesem, 79a, Shnehem Nosnin Get. So the halacha is, again, remember you have essentially you have a Safi Kiddushin. So we have, again, a potential Kiddushin from two different men. Obviously, she can't be married to two men, so the only way to resolve this suffix is to have both of them give her a get. However, Now, technically speaking, there is another possibility. It's the other possibility is one of them could give her a get, and the other one could marry her. Now, just understand what that looks like. So one of them gives her a get. That's fine. Now, remember, the other one still has to do another act of Kiddushin, right? Remember, again, he can't rely on that earlier act of Kiddushin because maybe that earlier act of Kiddushin was invalid. The point that the Mishnah is just making is either she could receive a get from both of them, in which case, again, she's free and clear. Again, she is going to have the status of a Grusha, but she's free and clear. Or halacha lamaisa, she could receive a get from one and marry with a new act of kiddushin, the second guy. So the Mishnah goes right. So we'll say, so same case now, just different characters. Let's say you have a woman. We're obviously talking about a situation of a bogaris, of a gidola, right? An adult woman decides she wants to get married. So what does she do? She appoints a shaliach to find a proper shidduch for her. Now, while the shaliach is out trying to find Mr. Right, what happens? She finds her own Mr. Right. So same shaila comes up. So whose kiddushin is effective? So the Mishnah says, Im shalah kadmu ze kiddusha kiddushin, vim shal shlucha kidmu kiddusha kiddushin. So once again, it's a matter of chronology. Who affected the kiddushin first? If she <laughs> affected it first, then Allah Khalamais, her kiddushin is valid. Shaliach affected it first, his kiddushin is valid. I vim ignon yodin. What happens if you don't know? What happens if you don't? I don't know who affected the first act of kiddushin. Then what's the halacha? Shnehem nosnin la get. Then I will say in that case, halacha la both will give a get. Same, same resolution as beforehand, but once again, vimratsu echa nosin la get. So pretty much it's the same, it's the same halacha, just different characters involved. But either way, the resolution is always the same. When it's unknown, who affected the first act of Kiddushin? So therefore, possibility one is both of them give her a get. Possibility two is one gives her a get, the other affects a new act of Kiddushin, and ultimately, again, she could remain married to the second guy. So the obvious kasha that Gemara is going to ask 
is why they need to illustrate the same principle twice. In other words, the cases are the same. The fact that case number one is the father appointing a shaliach, so the father goes out and finds a, finds a husband for his daughter, the shaliach goes out. The second case is the woman appoints the shaliach, she goes out, it's the same principle. It's the same principle. Same principle, right? Why the need to state the same case twice? This is very simply. Because how do we just list the first case, the Mishnah, which is a case that is focused on the father? So the Gemara says, the Gavra Kimle Biyuchsin. A father, a man, is more medactic. He's a bit more medactic. He's a bit more meticulous. He's, he knows the ins and outs of Yuchsin. Now, what does that mean? Take a quick look at Rashi. I know we have limited time tonight, but uh, just a quick look at Rashi. Mishum de Gavra Kimle Bi Yuchsin. Rashi says it's the first Rashi on the Daf, on Ein Chesim Adalif. He says, Ukishemotsam Yuchas has Kitsha. So, therefore, because a father generally is holding in the world of Yuchus, in the world of genealogical fitness, therefore, what happens? When he goes out and he finds a proper husband for his daughter, right? Kid Shalo, Ubitel Esa Shaliach. So a father knows what kind of guy he's looking for for his daughter. So now the father, he appointed a Shaliach. But when the father finds the right guy, what is he going to do? He's going to seal the deal with that guy. But what about the Shaliach? What, sh what does he do? He's Mavatal the Shlichos. He's Mavatal the Shlichos. He simply negates the Shlichos. Remember, yeah, we had this sugya earlier on in the Masechta about the mechanics of how you are Mavatal Shlichos. But again, without, without delving back into that, we're assuming right now the father could just on his own be mevatel the shlichos, and that's it. Finish up the Rashi. About Isisa, the lokim le but perhaps a woman who's not as versed in the issues of genealogical fitness. Ema afagav de kid sha'atzma lo bitle esa shaliach. So I will say it could be that even though she, this is case number two in the Mishnah, even though she accepted kiddushin from someone, this is fascinating, maybe she accepted kiddushin from someone, but... She wasn't mevatel the shliach. She didn't negate the agency. What's the pshat? What's the pshat? Why wouldn't she negate the agency if she accepted kiddushin from someone? Very simple. Let me see what the shliach comes back with. You know, there's a lot of fish in the sea. So I, I think I found a nice guy, but let me see maybe what the shliach comes back with. You know, it's like a, it's like a reality TV show, right? I'll see what the shliach comes back with, right? Then I'll make, I'll make my decision afterwards, and we'll see. He says, the sabra toma shliach mashkech miyuchos mizah. So I will say, so, that, so therefore, that's the novelty in the first case. The novelty in the first case is you might have thought that whenever the father is going out himself and he was and he found the guy, it must have been that he was mevatel the shliach. Must be mevatel the shliach. Therefore, again, there's no suffix. Only the father's condition is going to stand. But in the case of the girl, in the case, the second case of the Mishnah, where a woman may not be as versed in genealogical matters, so therefore, again, maybe even if she finds someone, she still doesn't negate the shlichos. Therefore, I need the, that, that's why I need the case. And had you just written the second case of the Mishnah, Mishum de Isisa Daiko Uminsaba. This is supposed to say it's almost like the, the opposite. That when a woman gets married, it's interesting, Daiko Uminsaba. Now, I'll say Daiko Uminsaba means that a woman is going to pay attention to the nature of the man that she's marrying. Now, this is Lav Dafka about Yichos. Lav Dafka about Yichos. This seems to be much more just about the quality of the individual. The Gemara says, however, and therefore again, and therefore again, halacha if she finds the right person, she would automatically be mevat al shaliach. About ihu, emalo ichpasle. But a father, maybe all a father is really concerned with is what? Is what? Getting his daughter married. All right, uh, I don't love my son-in-law. Uh, whatever, get in line, right? So you, you know, it's 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 not it's not the end of the world. So I say it's fascinating, just like a totally reverse idea. Look at Rashi. Lo ichbasle bebito imtinasi lemiuchas kol duhu velo batli v'shliuchos the shliach the shliach velo batli v'shliuchos the shliach vafilu mekadsha legrua vahad the kadim kitcha saber doma lo mashkach abali mashkach lo batli. Okay, so I say so. Those are the two tzadim. So because each case if looked at on its own, might yield a little bit of a slanted conclusion. Therefore, the Mishnah feels the need to include both cases. But to be clear, both cases are operating on the same principle. So whenever you have two people looking for a husband for the same woman, for the same woman, again, so ideally, whoever gets to the finish line first, that's the Kiddushin that's effective. If you're not sure who got there first, then two mechanisms, two mechanisms of res or two avenues of resolution. Either A, both husbands give her a get, or B, one gives her a get and the other one can marry her. But again, if the other one marries her, what is he marrying her based on? A new act of Kiddushin, a second act of Kiddushin. Beautiful. Let's go back to Itmar. Kitsha via bederech, the kitsha atzma Another interesting case. Let's say the father received Kiddushin for his daughter, 
for his daughter. Right? On, on the road, so to speak. And the girl herself received, she accepted Kiddushin for herself. So once again, we have two acts of Kiddushin happening over here. One that the father did for his daughter, one that the daughter did for herself. And I will say, now to throw a wrinkle in this, Vahari he Bogeres. And I will say, she's a Bogeres. Now remember, you know, what's a Bogeres? So it's actually interesting. Bogeres, up until now, we've always been focusing on, what's the definition of Bogeres? Bogeres? 12 years old and six months, right? So again, before 12 is a Kitana, 12 to 12 and six months is a Nara, 12 years old and six months and on is a Bogeres. What we have not touched on is a fascinating concept. Rashi actually references it in Gimar Mesechas Nida that there are certain signs of physical maturation that ultimately could kind of launch a girl into Bogeres status even if she's younger than 12 years old and six months. So that's going to be important because that's what we're going to be focusing on over here. So we'll say, so now, what happened? So father, father went and accepted Kiddushin for his daughter. Okay, daughter accepted Kiddushin on her own, and she's a Bulgaris. So what's the Shaila? What's the Shaila? We'll say, so the Shaila is, the Shaila is, at the time that the father accepted the Kiddushin, was she a Bulgaris or not? That's the Shaila. If she was a Bulgaris, remember, once she becomes a Bulgaris, no I'm saying there's no schuyas in it, right? Then he certainly does not have the right to go ahead and, and marry her off. So if she was, if she was a Bulgaris, again, his kiddushin is void, her kiddushin is effective. However, if she wasn't a Bulgaris, then that means that Halach Lamaisa, he had a right to marry her off, in which case his kiddushin is valid, her kiddushin is void. So what do we do over here? So it says the Gimara. Says the Gemara. So Rav Amar Harehi Bogaris Lefanenu. So Rav says, Rav says, Halacha Lamaisa, she's a Bogaris. Now, literally translated, she's a Bogaris in front of us. What does that mean? Says Rashi, the Kidusha Kidushin, Pelosha Lavia. In other words, I will say, what Rav says is, if she presents as a Bogaris now at the time the Shaila comes up, we back up that status until we know otherwise. So therefore, again, there's no reason to assume, and remember, all this is happening on the same day. So there's no reason to assume that Halach HaLamaisa, she wasn't, if she's a Bulgaris now, there's no reason to assume that she wasn't a Bulgaris when the father accepted Kiddush on her behalf as well. So Bulgaris is another way of saying she's a Bulgaris, therefore her Kiddush is valid, his Kiddush is invalid. Shmuel and Shmuel says, no, no, no. Shmuel says, we have to be Choshesh, for both of their Kiddushin. Now remember again, what does it mean to be Choshesh for both their Kiddushin? Look at Rashi. Rashi says, Shema Kiddusha Av Na'ara Haisa Bekidmu Kiddushav. So what's I So again, the issue is, so, so Shul al says, we're not sure. It's a Suffolk. It's a Suffolk. Suffolk, Suffolk as to who she is married to, right? Ultimately, again, the, 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 the father's, no, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna clarify that. No, she is, here's what we know. She is a Bulgarist now, when we're trying to decide whose Kiddushin is, is effective. What we don't know, we're going to touch on this just, just a moment, like when did she become a Bulgaris? So essentially, the Suffolk Kiddushin is tied into, was she, it's also a Suffolk Bulgaris. Was she a Bulgaris at the time that her father accepted Kiddushin on her behalf or not? That's the fundamental Shaila. So Rav says, if she presents as a Bulgaris now, that's her assumed status, interestingly enough, even going backwards. Not, not indefinitely backwards, but backwards enough to the time that the father accepted the Kiddush on her behalf. Shmuel says, Suffolk. Suffolk, Suffolk. So let's, let's analyze. So Amos. So, so Gemara says, when, when is this happening? Right? In other words, when it, chronologically, chronologically, when is this happening? Ilayma b'soch shisha. So if we're talking about a situation where halach ala that this Suffolk is coming up, within six months. So in other words, it's happening between the age of 12 years old and 12 years old and six months. Now remember, we've always assumed between 12 and 12 and, and six months, between 12 and 12 and a half is, we've always assumed that what? Nara. Nara both say, so if we're saying that this is happening within six months, Baha Neymarav, Hari Hu Bulgaris Lefanenu, I don't understand. Now both say, now take a look at Rashi for just a moment. I Neymar Besoch Shisha, so in a so shisha chadashim shebe naros labagros ta aminan ein be naros labagros el shisha chadashim bilvad. Now we'll say. Now remember, we've up until now, up until kiddushin ayin tesam and aleph, we've always operated under the idea that these are kind of hard and fast rules. Low, younger than twelve kitana, twelve to twelve and six months is a nara, twelve and six months and, and above is a bulgaris. And now the Gemara is introducing us to it. it's not necessarily the case. Like I mentioned before, look at Rashi. You could have you could have a girl who is advancing in physical development, which accelerates the timeline of bagrus. 
So the Gemara says, "Ela shav b'shishim bilvad k'sheviya simani naros in a shav elios bageres ala shishim chadashim upamim shimim maheres livgar or livgar v'simane nikarim bedadeh kidesam seches nida parabah." So we'll say so again. We're, we're not going to get into this sugya, but Lamai said the Gemara says the Gemara seches nida. Rashi quotes over here. There are certain signs of physical maturation. She develops physically that could accelerate the timeline. So the Gemara says like this: When is this happening? When is this happening? So if this is a case that is coming up within the, within the six-month window between 12 and 12 and a half, that's where this is coming up. So let's just play this out, right? So now, father accepted Kiddush on the girl's behalf, girl accepted Kiddush on her behalf. Now we don't know who is she Mikudesh is to. The Shaila presents, the girl has signs of physical maturation, which means that now when we look at her, her status is a Bulgaris. So it can't be that Rav is saying that we back up that status, because remember, again, that's happening within the six months itself. It doesn't make sense to back up the status of Bagros when you're in the six-month window. The most you could do is from the time that she presents and going forward that she's a Bulgaris. But to apply that status retroactively and to say that her father's Kiddushin was void, her Kiddushin is good, that doesn't seem to make sense. So let's read inside. It can't be. If it's within the six months, it's impossible to think that Rav would say back up the status of Bagros. Rather, again, what you have to say is, when is she a Bulgaris? She's a Bulgaris as of the time that we see that she's a Bulgaris. Elo la'achar shisha. Rather, it must be, what are we talking about over here? We're talking about where the Shaila presents itself after six months. After six months. So now she's post, she's, she's 12 years old in six months. So she is now in the official parish of Bagros. Here's the problem. Name a Shmuel chashin l'kidush eishneem. Why would Shmuel say that it's a suffix? If she's a Bulgaris, we'll say, what's the halacha? If she's a Bulgaris, her kiddushin is valid, her father's is not. So what's the case? We'll say, fascinating. Fascinating. This whole case is happening when? On the last day of the sixth month. The la- the, so we'll call it the, na- the last day of calendrical naros. The, the last day of calendrical naros. Okay, so we'll say, so now watch this. So Rav Amar, how do you Now we'll say, now, so just to, just to clarify the case, we ignore on the sending over here. The case itself is happening on the last day of calendrical naros, and remember, both acts of Kiddushin are happening on that very day. Happening on that very day. So now this makes a bit more sense. So Rav Amar, how do you Bogaris Lefanenu? Midahashta Bogaris, Bitsafr Nami Bogaris. Rav will say, look, if she's a Bogaris now in the afternoon, right, the Bepashta's what? She was a Bulgaris in the morning also. In other words, whatever her status is, that status should devolve upon the entire day. And therefore, halacha lemaisa, Rav will say, her kiddushin is valid, her father's kiddushin is not. Ushmuel, Amar Shmuel says, no. Hashtahu da'aisi simanim. Not true. Because this is the last day of calendrical naros, why can't she say that she became Bulgaris when? Right now. Right now, when she physically presents with signs of physical maturation, that's when she becomes a Bulgaris. But Lamaisa, maybe this morning, she was still a Nara. If she was still a Nara, then what? Her father has rights. She doesn't have rights. Therefore, Shmuel says it's a suffix. So we'll so, say, so, 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 just to highlight what is at the fundamental root of this machlokas, right? It's, it's actually a very exciting machlokas. What's, I think if we all didn't just get off an airplane, we'd even find it more exciting, right? But Lamaisa, so like, what's so exciting about this machlokas? So we'll say, what it has to do is, when you see a reality present itself, so the shayla is, can you, can you retroactively back up that reality? Or does that reality only change things from now, mehashto, going forward? That's the machlokas. Rav says, essentially, if we see a reality now, there's no reason not to extend that back. Now, you can't extend it back indefinitely. What Rav is going to say is, I could extend it back when? To that day. To that day. Shmuel says, no, when you see a change in status, that tells you from this point going forward, everything's changed, but you don't necessarily have the right to extend it back. Now, I will say, to be clear, Shmuel is not ruling on this definitively. Shmuel still says that's a suffix. It's a suffix, right? That, that, that's how Lachamah says treating it. So, Gemara says like this. According to Shmuel, why is this different than the case of the Mikra? I will say, we've seen this case many times. This nan, Mikva shin nimdad, Mikva shin nimdad, <coughs> Excuse me, Vinimsa Chaser. So if you measure a mikvah and it turns out that it's not 40 saw, it's only 39 saw. So what's the halacha? Kol taro shenasu al gabav lemafreya. Sorry, kol taro shenasu al gabav lemafreya ben bershas yachet ben bershas yachet meos. So I'll say if you find that a mikvah is deficient, essentially that mikvah is invalid retroactively until when? Until the when? 
until the last point you knew for sure that it was kosher. So anything you immersed, items, people, again, that has to do with suffix, which we're going to see in a little bit, is, is all is all tamea, is all tamea. So we'll say, so what do you see from here? What do you see from here? You see from here that Allah saw when you go ahead and you find a new status, we do apply retroactively, right? In other words, that, that's what we're doing. In other words, I, I, I go to measure the mikvah. The mikvah is 39 sa'ah. So I can say, listen, when did the mikvah become deficient? Just now. Just now. But everything before is good. But that's, but that's how the halacha is, right? The, the, the Mishnah is saying that when you find a deficient mikvah, that retroactive deficient status, or it says that deficient status is applied retroactively. So you see that you take present status and apply it retroactively. So Shmuel, why don't you do that by the case of the Bulgaras? So the girl presents as a Bulgaras on the last calendrical day of Narus, say that that new status extends retroactively for the entire day, in which case her kiddushin should be good, her father should not. Why is it different? Shiny hasam, the ikala meymar, he'emet tamad achas kasa. No, no, no. Mikvah's different. Mikvah's different. Why is mikvah different? I would say because the only reason someone or something is going to the mikvah is why? Is why? Because it's tameh. It has a cheskas tuma. So here's what I've got. I've got an item that had a, an item or a person that has a cheskas tuma. And now again, I have a mikvah that is a suffake. That is a suffake. So I have a chazaka against the suffake. Of course, the chazaka ultimately is going to win out. And that's why anyone or anything that used that mikvah beforehand, by definition, is going to be relegated to his previous toma status. So the Gemara says, Well, Tava, Adraba, Hamid mikvah cheskaso, the Emerlo chaser. Oh, one second. There's another chazaka. The chazaka was that the mikvah was kasher, right? We, was the one thing we know is we know at some point in the mikvah is kasher. So I want to say the mikvah is a cheskas kashus and let that stand. To which the Gemara says, Hare chaser lefanecha. Here's the problem. The mikvah is deficient right now. It's hard to claim, it's hard to look at the mikvah as having a cheskas kashus, even though we know once upon a time that is true. When the when you look at it right now, it's clearly deficient. Fichach. I'm sorry, Again, Shmuel, I can say the same thing. The Bulgaris is standing right in front of you. Right now, she's a Bulgaris. To which the Gemara says, Hashtohu de Bagra. I could say she became Bulgaris right now. Right now. The Gemara says, Good. I could also say, Hasanami, Hashtohu de Chaser. Again, I can say the same thing about mikvah. When the mikvah, become, when the mikvah become deficient? Right now. Let's say first wide line. Hasam, Tartil Reusa, Hacha, Chadal Reusa. Shabbat so says it's interesting. By the mikvah, by the mikvah, you have two things going against it, right? What are the two things going against it? Number one, anyone or anything that used the mikvah had what? A cheskas tuma. And number two, now ultimately the mikvah itself is deficient. So really, I have I have two things. So when you put those two things together, everyone and everything you use had a cheskas tuma, and the mikvah is currently deficient. You put you put those together, and it makes sense to extend the tame status of the item retroactively. Here by the Bulgaras, here by the Bulgaras, I only have, so to speak, one issue, right? Which is ultimately, again, when did the girl become a Bulgaras or not? Rashi says, Hacha gabi kidushia av chadal reos odika hari Bulgaras lefanenu. Fine, Ushmuel, maishno mi chavis. So once again, Gemara asks, Ushmuel, why is there in the case of the chavis? What's the case of the chavis? Another fascinating case. I'm sorry, what time do we, what time do we stop? Is it 7.15? Okay, good. All right, we'll get as far as we can. So Gemara says, Shmuel, my Shnami Chavis. Why does Shmuel ultimately again, why does Shmuel go ahead? What about the case of the Chavis? What's the case of the Chavis? Tisanya. Second wide line, Ayin Tessa Medalif. Hayyabo, the case of Chavis, Lahav Rishlad, Shruma. So we'll say, here's the case. If you can imagine for a moment, I have a, I have a barrel of wine. A barrel of wine. So instead of going ahead and separating out Shruma from the wine that I'm consuming, I have a Shruma barrel. I set it aside. Now, I didn't designate it as truma. What I do is I have it on the side, and every once in a while when I have to separate a truma from wine, I designate some portion of that barrel as truma. As truma, okay. So I bought the case of Lavish Truma, but the Sigmar says, Beholik, for Akhakach, Nimt says Chometz. Oh, what happens? So everything is going fine, right? Life is great. One day I decide to inventory my, uh, my barrels, and I check my truma barrel, and what happens? The wine has turned. It's turned, it's vinegar. So I say, obviously, if it's vinegar, it's no longer suitable to be used, ultimately, again, as truma for the wine that I'm consuming. So I say, now what's the shayla? So now what, what's, what's my shayla? When did it turn? When did it turn? So the Gemara says, kol gimel yamim, so the Gemara says, uh, says chometz. So kol gimel yamim, vadai, vadai, mikan ve'elach safek. So the Gemara says something very interesting about say. So all three days, right? All three days, Rashi says, Kol Gimel Yomim Vadai, Garcin Velo Garcin Harishonim. So I'll say, it's actually a side machlokes about this of when we say all three days, 
Does all three days mean the first three days that the barrel was, that was set aside and afterwards it turned? Or no, maybe it means, just simply Rashi says, is the previous three days. So if I discover this, if I discover it on a, on a Wednesday, so again, to Wednesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, anything that was separated is going to be fine. We don't assume that it turned in the last three days. Mikan ve'elich safek, anything before that is ultimately going to be a safek. So I will say, so once again, what do you see from here? What do you see from here? You see that you do take present status and back it up retroactively, at least to some degree. Ve'ramin and chavis ha'mikva. And I will say, now forget about Bogeres. Now I have a bigger shayla. How to reconcile the cases of the barrel of wine with what? With the mikvah. Remember, again, we'll say, let's go back. What was the mikvah case? I go to the measure of the mikvah. The mikvah is only 39 sa. What's talacha? What's talacha? Anything and everything, or anyone and everything, there are anything and anyone who has used that mikvah, tame. Tame. So again, what you see is halacha la We take that tumma status, we apply it totally retroactively. Contrast that ultimately again with the case of the barrel. What's talacha? By the barrel, we assume anything you did in the last three days was okay. It was okay, right? It, did, it didn't turn. It didn't turn. No, I'm sorry. The first three days. I'm sorry. Anything you did, anything you separated the first three days is going to be good, right? Afterwards, ultimately, again, we assume that it turned. The point over here is you see that we don't automatically take the apostle status and just apply it retroactively all the way back to the source. So Maish Sligimar says, So Raminan, Chavis HaMikvah, why is it by mikvah that we say vaday everything is tame, and yet ultimately again by the barrel it's suffix? Who is the opinion of the barrel case? Rabbi Shimon he. Rabbi Shimon, and what does Rabbi Shimon say? The Gabi Mikva Nami Sveka Mashvi. Ah, oh, there's another opinion. There's another opinion. Ultimately, say, but it's always, it's always the greatest Musar Haskell, you know, sometimes, sometimes the Gemara will go ahead and present facts that, that contradict each other. And so we assume that the first order of business is resolution. So what the Gemara teaches us is you often don't have to go ahead and somehow align conflicting facts. Sometimes it's okay to exist in a world where there are different opinions. There are different opinions, ah, but they can't reconcile. That's okay. There could be opposing opinions that don't reconcile. And again, as long as everyone is aware of the other opinion, Lamaisa, everything could create beautiful spiritual harmony. It's such a Musar Haskell. Disanya, Kaltaros, Shinaswa, Gabav, Lamafreya, Bain Birsha Sayaka, Bain Birsha Sayaka. So we'll say it's back to the mikvah case, right? So anything you did, anything you immersed in that mikvah, people, items, mikvah was in a private domain, public domain, right? Whatever it is, doesn't matter. Tameos. That was the opinion we saw before. Now watch this, Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon says, Bershos harabim tohoros, bershos hayochid tolin. Now, what's it? Rabbi Shimon disagrees. Rabbi Shimon says, no, it depends. If it's a suffix tumma in roshos harabim, then we know, that, again, this is based on sota, we know that suffix tumma bershos harabim is tar. Is tar. Suffix tumma bershos hayochid, based on sota, is going to be tame. So the Gemara says, say, Rabbi Shimon says, bershos harabim tohoros, bershos hayochid tolin. So the point over here is there is another sheet by mikvah, and this other sheet by mikvah of ultimately, again, if it's a shusarabim, ultimately, again, you're going to say tar. If it's a shusayachid, tolin, it's suspended. That better aligns with the opinion by the chavis, by truma. Aval rabbanon, tevala mafreya. But according to the rabbanon, ultimately, again, by the, by the, by the barrel case, Tevel amafres. It's going to be retroactively tevel. Tevel. Shiny hosam di ikal amemar hemet tevel al cheskaso. No, the barrel case is different. Why are both saying? Because there's a chazaka. What was the chazaka? That the wine that you were consuming was what? Was totally untithed. The gemara says ve'emar lo niskan, and ultimately again, therefore, say it was not remedied. Adraba hemet yain al cheskaso ve'emar lo hechmitz. There's another chazaka. What's the opposing chazaka? Let's say that halacha lemaisa. Say that the wine didn't turn. So we know, we know that the wine once upon a time was wine. So just keep it like that. Keep that chazaka. Hari hech mitzlefanecha. You can't say that because it just turned to, you see now it's vinegar. So hachinami. Hari hi bogeres. So we'll say now we're bringing back bogeres. This is like mamavish. Like everybody's getting involved in this. What about bogeres? Right now she's a bogeres right in front of you. Hash tigmar sa hashu de bagra. No, I can say right now she became bogeres. Again, hachinami hashu de achmitz. I can say the, the wine also just became vinegar right now. Tishmar says, okay, let's take a breath. Hasam. Tarti the reyasa, hacha chad the reyasa. So the gemara says chad the reyasa gadi ika. So we'll say. So once again, we go back. Again, the difference is remember by the Bulgaria's case. Really, all you're going to have is what? All you're going to have ultimately again is one suffix, one one issue. Is she Bulgaria's war? I should say 
Was she a Bulgaris in the morning? Was she not a Bulgaris? In all the other cases, both mikvah as well as chavis, you have two things working against you, right? A cheskas tuma or a cheskas tevel. And now ultimately, again, a deficient mikvah and a barrel of wine that has turned to vinegar. Let's say this whole thing is a machlo gesanai. I will say we'll spend two more minutes, then we'll stop. Neymah ketanai. Feels like my dreams for an Eretz Yisrael seal are quickly evaporating. But right, no, no, we'll, we'll, we'll make up time. So the Gemara says, Mi motzi mi yad mi. So we'll say, this is a totally unrelated case, but actually quite fascinating. A very quick look at Rashi. Tap Rashi and Ayin Tesla on the day, 79b. Rashi says, Mi motzi mi yad mi. Hakosiv nechasav la'achirim velo shir klum. So we'll say, watch this. Imagine for a moment you have Ruvain. Ruvain goes ahead and gifts away his entire estate. And he withheld nothing for himself. And I will say now, if Reuben was a shchiv mira, right, deathly ill, and he did that, and then he recovered, so what's the halacha? What's the halacha? The matana so chozeris, right? The, the, the matana reverts back because it's clear that he thought he was going to die. That's why he gave away everything. And I will say, contrast out the following halacha. What happens if Reuben was a totally healthy guy? And he just decides to give away all of his property, all of his property, right, to someone else. Then what's the halacha? <laughs> it's a valid gift, right? It's done. It's done. And I will say, now watch this. Now watch this. So the Gemara says, Mi motzi mi yad mi. And I will say now, in this case over here, in this case over here, you have the following situation. That Allah Chalamaisa, so Reuben gifted away all of his property to Shimon. Right? So now what happens? He comes back to reclaim it. He claims that it was a Shchiv Meira. Shchiv Meira, what happens? Shimon claims, you were, I just, you were fine. You're absolutely fine. You're always faker, right? You're fine, right? You, you, you always say, right? You're always about to die. You're fine. You're fine. I will say, now, obviously, this is a big thing because according to Ruvain, he says, um, the gift comes back to me. I thought I was going to die. I made a matna shchimira. Shimon says, you are totally healthy. The gift stands. So, mi motzi miyad mi. So, we'll say, who wins in that case? So, the Gemara says, who motzi miyadam below rayo? Vehein in motzi miyado ela birayo. El, sorry, below rayo. So, ultimately, and Ruvain, Ruvain, the grantor, right? He has the ability to extract it without any kind of rayo, but they don't have the ability to extract it from him without any kind of proof. This is Rabbi Yaakov. Take a look at Rashi. Rashi says, Hu motzim adam im amdo vehechziko benechasim v'insarach la virayin. I will say, this is presupposing that Ruvain is the muhsak. So if Reuven has the property, he re-seized the, pro- re-seized the property, or just never ended up actually giving it away. So Allah says, if he's in possession, he does not have to prove his point, right? And ultimately, the Allah decides with him. That's Rabbi Yaakov. Rabbi Nassim Omer, in Barihu, it depends what is his current state. What is his current state? In Barihu, if he's healthy, Allah lahavi raya. Then he has to bring a raya. He has to bring a raya. Shaya shchiv meira, right? Ve'im shchiv meira hu alehem lahavi raya shebari haya. So we'll say it's interesting. So if he's healthy, he has to bring the raya that he was a shchiv meira, and ultimately again when he made the gift. And if he's a shchiv meira, they have to bring they being the recipient has to bring a raya that he was bari. Name a rav, damar krabi nason, ushmo damar krabi yakov. So we'll say it seems to be a nice alignment. Say that rav holds like krabi nason and shmo holds like krabi yakov. Amar the charav, rav will say no, no, no. On a damar afilu krabi yakov. That's not true. I could even hold like krabi yakov. How so? Ad kan lo kamar Yaakov hasam di ikal meimar hamed mamon al cheskaso. It's different about say. Why does Rabbi Yaakov say that emot si miyado? Because again, about say possession is nine tenths of the law, right? He he has the chaz. He's the muchzak. He's the muchzak, right? Aval hacha mi neimar hamed gof al cheskaso. But over here, who's to say that we say establish the girl's physicality based on a previous chazago? Ushmuel or Shmuel says ana dami afil the Rabbi Nason. Shmuel says I say even like Rabbi Nason. How so? Ad kan lo kam Rabbi Nason hasam de kuli alma becheskas briem kaimi. The boss is incredible. Why does Rabbi Nason say what he says? Because the boss said this is chazaka. What's the chazaka? Chazaka is people are healthy. Fascinating. Chazaka is people are healthy. Man de kamam pik nafshei meches mechazaka have alei le esuye raya. If somebody wants to change that chazaka, the burden of proof is upon the one who wants to change the cheskas brios. Fascinating, right? The chazaka is that a person is healthy. Right? So Allah says, if you want to change that, that's on you. Aval hocha, mi kamafka nafsha mi chazaka de kame. But I will say over here, ultimately, again, are we extracting it from the previously established chazaka? So if Rabbi says, Allah says, as much as we thought that maybe the positions of Rabbi Yaakov and Rabbi Nasan would ultimately again align with Rabbi Shmuel, Halacha Lamaisa, ready? Halacha they do not. So, Nima Kahani tonight. So, just to reorient ourselves a little bit. So, if you remember again, we yesterday we were focusing on 
the or interested in today's daf and ayin test. We're focusing on the fundamental machlokes Rav and Shmuel with the following situation: a father, we'll call him Ruvain, is makabel kiddushin for his daughter in the morning, and the daughter herself is makabel as kiddushin a little bit later on that day. The way the, so the shayla, of course, is whose kiddushin is valid and whose kiddushin is invalid. So if you remember again, so the way the Gemara set up the case was we're talking about a situation where it's the last day of the 12 years, it's the last day of the six months, so to speak. Now she's 12 years old in six months, so it's the calendrical end of Bagros. She's claiming already she was a Bogaris as of the morning when she accepted kiddushin. He's claiming, or he's saying, he's not claiming anything, but it's claiming that he had the right Oh, I'm sorry. She claims that she was a Bulgarian in the morning when he accepted Kiddushin, the father, and therefore his Kiddushin is invalid. And Halach so her Kiddushin that she accepted was totally valid. So that's the fundamental, that's the fundamental machlokes. So Rav ultimately tells us that Hare Bulgaris Lefanenu, if she's a Bulgaris now, there's no reason we can't back up that status too a little bit earlier in the day. And Shmuel says, it's a, it's a suffix. It's a suffix. So now the Gemara says as follows. So if you remember, again, we were bringing a whole bunch of different opinions to contradict Shmuel. We brought the case of the Mikvah. We brought the case of the Chavis. So now the Gemara says as follows. Neima kehani tanoi. So say that this machlokes between Rav and Shmuel is the following machlokes tanoi. Kitsha via baderach, the kitsha atzma beir. If a girl goes ahead and her father accepts kiddushin for her baderach on the way, on the road, and she, accept, she herself accepts kiddushin on her behalf in the city. I will say now, the truth is, the locations of the actual Kiddushin are not relevant. What the Gemara is trying to highlight over here is, they don't know what the other is doing, right? This is not a case of where, you know, this is, the, the Gemara is not giving us like a window into a difficult father-daughter relationship over here. It's just that neither has any idea what the other is doing. So the father is being Mechabal Kiddushin over here, the daughter is being Mechabal Kiddushin over there, and therefore again, they don't know what the other is doing. So what's that? Hari Hu Bogares. Bari Bogaris, and she's Bogaris. So Tana Chada, Harihi Bogaris Lefaninu. So one opinion says, one Tana says, if she's a Bogaris now, the Pashtus, we could extend retroactively that status of Bagrus earlier as well. The Tanya Idok, the other Raisa says, the other opinion says, Chayshinon the Kiddush Eshneim. So we'll say, so it seems to be that the Machlokes over here, the Machlokes Tanoim, is the same exact Machlokes of Rav, of, of Rav and Shmuel. Rav and Shmuel. To which the Gemara says, to which the Gemara says, my love, chad kirav, chad kishmuel. So one opinion is like Rab, one opinion is like Shmuel. So the Gemara says, no, lo, idi vi idi kishmuel. Both are like Shmuel. Kan b'machashto, kan b'she'i machashto. So what's this fascinating? The Gemara wants me to find distinction. Maybe both of these opinions are like Shmuel. Both of these opinions are like Shmuel. That haloch alamaisa, it's suffix. I so why the distinction? So the Gemara says one is talking about a case where the girl contradicts the father. One is where the girl doesn't contradict the father. Look at Rashi. Rashi's right across. B'machashto Rashi says so v'hadik tani harihi bogeres lefaninu b'machashto la'aviha lomar kvar bagarti me esmo. This is interesting. I have a little new wrinkle over here. So it could very well be that halacha l'maisa, even the opinion that says hari bogeres lefaninu. That if she's a Bulgarist now, we could retroactively extend her status of Bagros. That's a case where the girl is making a claim. What's her claim? I was a Bulgarist yesterday already. I was a Bulgarist yesterday. So that's, that's her claim. So that's different than what we've seen before. Up until now, again, she's, we've never seen her making a claim. Here she's making a claim. To which the Yomars of Venema, Midimas Nisa Lopli, I'm already not me lopli. So I'll say, why don't we say again? If therefore, if you're telling me how there's no machlokis rav and shmuel over here, so maybe there's no machlokis rav and shmuel earlier as well. But this bara harav yosef reid rav menashim midvil avad uvda kavase derav veikpid. Yet rav said there was a situation. Rav yosef reid derav menashim from devil. He had a case like this come up, and how did he paskin? He paskin like rav. Remember again, rav is of the opinion hari bogeres lefanenu. So ultimately, the case came up. And the Psaq Halacha was like Rav. And yet, and what, and what happened? So the Ikbit Shmuel, and Shmuel, was, and Shmuel was upset. Now the fact that Shmuel was upset that someone passed in like Rav, what does that tell us? What does that tell us? There's Machlokas. There's Machlokas. Va'amri Kuli, see, and Shmuel said a little bit, a little bit facetiously, Va'amri Kuli Alma Kaili Le Bekava Zuta, Va'amid Rabban on Kaili Le Bekava Rabba. So literally translated, literally translated, it means that Shmuel said, you know, the entire world only operates with a small measure. 
But this man, this Rav, Menash, Rav Yossi paid Rav Menashe, he operates with a larger measure. So that's like a shtach. You know, that's a little bit of a, of a Talmudic insult to say, you know, no one else knows. You know, according to everyone else, it's a machlokis. But this guy, this guy, <coughs> apparently he's so confident that he can rule unilaterally like Rav. Now, the reason why the Gemara is bringing up this exchange is Halach HaLemai said to tell us that it is a machlokis. Obviously, from Shmuel's, from Shmuel's response, you see that Halach HaLemai said, this is a machlokis. These are that halo pligi. And if at the end of the day it was a machlokis, Rav and Shmuel, so why would Shmuel be makbid? Dilma ki avdi uvda. So maybe when this came, maybe again when this came up, this was also talking about a situation where the girl contradicted her father. So we'll say here the Gemara ends up by saying that Allah follows Shmuel, but Rav Ashi Amr Hilchasa Kavase Dirav. Rav Ashi says that Allah follows Rav. The Hilchasa Kavase Dirav, and the Gemara seems to end off by saying that Allah follows Rav. So we'll say. So remember again, what does that mean? What that would seem to mean is in a case where father was Meqabal Kiddushin, daughter was Meqabal Kiddushin for themselves on the same day, and now she presents as a Bogeres, that accord, seems to be the halakha is that according to Rabbi Yitzhak, if she presents like a Bogeres now, that means she was a Bogeres in the morning as well, and therefore her Kiddushin is valid, his Kiddushin is that. Now I'll tell you the Rambam, the Rambam Paskins, so just to so, so the Rambam Paskins over here, not the, sorry, the Shukhan Aruch, uh, sorry, Shukhan Aruch Paskins in Evan Ezer, Sif Lamed Zayin Sif Hey. Here's the Psaq of the Shulchan Aruch. Kitsha Aviyah Baboker, Bikitsha Atzma Ba'erev. So literally, our, our, I still can't get over Sepharia. I don't know, maybe because I'm old, right? I, to me, like, it, it's incredible. I was, I was l- looking at this a little bit on the plane. And like it's always in our share back home, we always like to, because that film moves so quickly, you have to be able to hold on to something. Okay, so we skip a number of proper steps in going from the Gemara to the Shulchan Aruch. But like, it's incredible. It's just incredible that we live in a time where literally you can access anything, absolutely anything and everything. So listen to this. So Shulchan Aruch Paskins in... So same exact case. Father accepted Kiddushin for the daughter in the morning. She accepted Kiddushin for herself in the afternoon or the evening. Now remember again, the Shulchan is following the, the very narrow way in which the Gemara set up this case, which is it's the last day of the six months of her naros, okay. Ubat kuama so bulgaras, and now she, they, she saw this. She's a bulgaras. Machzikim osa becheskas bulgaras. The kiddushe haav eino klum. So like Rav, like Rav. Like Rav if she's a bulgaras now, then we extend that that status backwards, and therefore again, her kiddushin is good. Father's kiddushin is nothing. So the, so the, so the, she doesn't need to get, get from the. Nothing, nothing. It's irrelevant. There is no. There, we look at the father's kiddushin as simply having not happened. Having not happened. Now the Shulchan Aruch says, "V'yesh misha omer da'afilo eno machishto lo mar sheba siman ababoker v'yesh misha omer davka machishaso." Aval be'ena. So this is interesting. So now then the Shulchan Aruch kind of brings in. He says, "Halacha lemaisa." So what about what about you know? Does does there need to be an element of contradiction? Not be an element of contradiction. So that so that is a machlok in the Shulchan Aruch. So in other words, this last little piece over here as to whether or not there needs to be, does the daughter need to be contradicting her father or not, that's a machalogist. But I will say, but for our purposes, the way I want to, the I want to close out the sugya, for our purposes, halacha lemaisa, halacha lemaisa, we pass in like Rav, and therefore again in this case, her kiddushin is going to be valid, his kiddushin is not going to be valid, and to the point just made, wouldn't even require a get Ultimately, again, from the man whom her father was Makadesh to. Incredible. Good. That's substantial. We'll say with that, let us begin. New Mishnah. Yeah, because the truth is, in, in general, in general, the halacha is right. The only time the, the, only time the Gemara discusses the idea of her keeping Kasef Kiddushin for an invalid Kiddushin is in a case where we know for sure the Kiddushin wasn't valid, right? Like, you might have that case where her brother, her brother gave her Kesef Kiddushin. Right. Yeah. But I think in a case like this, Halakha Lamaisa, she would have to return, she would definitely have to return the Kiddushin. She doesn't have it anyway. Yeah. Right, so hers, hers, right. Right. Hers, right, hers is good, right. Right, right, right. right. Good morning, Jeremy, thank you. Father right, Father had to return it. Good. All right, good about say Mishnah, Mishnah, great new Mishnah over here. Says the Mishnah, Mishi Yatsuhuvi Ishto. 
the Medina Sayam. So here's the case. Here's the case. So a man and his wife, we'll call them Reuben and Rachel, went out to Medina Sayam. They went overseas. Uba hu ishta ubanov. So what's the case over here? The case over here is that halacha lemaisa, they come back, and they come back as a family. So they left this husband and wife, they came back as a family. So va'amar isha shiyatsa imi le medina sayam, hare hi zu ve'elu banel. So Ruvain claims, Ruvain claims, the woman whom I left overseas with, this is her, and these are her kids. And these are her kids. So I will say, so remember, this is still in the, this is still in the sugi of genealogy over here. So remember again, what he's trying to show is that these kids are kshirim, they're from this particular woman. Fine. So what's halacha? In circle, habi raya lo ala isha v'lo ala banim. So there's no need for him to bring any kind of raya on this woman, or ultimately again for the children. Now the woman, the woman doesn't have to bring a raya on why? Because remember, this is the wife he left with to Medina Sayam. But for the kids, he doesn't have to bring a raya either. Okay. So the Gemara is going to qualify why you don't need a raya for that. Mesa ve'elu banel. What happens if Reuben went overseas with Rachel? He comes back and he claims, listen, she died overseas, but these are her kids. Right? These are her kids. So what's the halacha? Maybe raya ala abana ve'no maybe raya ala isha. See, he brings a raya, ultimately... She had the kids already? I'm sorry? The kids were overseas. These are, these are all overseas. Oh, because remember, that's the halacha. They're coming back. They're coming back. And no one knows who these kids are. He's tining, he's claiming that at the end of the day, these are the kids, these are the kids from my wife. So she's now deceased. We're going to see, let me tell you this piece now. In the case, in the first case of Mishnah, where he comes back, where he comes back, right? So Reuben is married to Rachel, they, before they go overseas, they go overseas. They come back and there are kids. There are kids. So in that case, he says, this is my wife. Okay, you all know my wife. She's Rachel. We got married over here before we left. These are the kids. So the Gemara qualifies, and the Gemara is going to say, it's Kruchim Lefanah. We're talking about cases of little kids. And the little kids are following her. So the assumption is, who do little children follow? Their mother. Their mother. So it's just like, it's, it's circumstantial evidence, but it's circumstantial evidence that works more than, more than good enough in this case. In case number two, again, Ruben was married to Rachel before they went overseas. They go overseas. She dies overseas, but they had children before she passed away. He comes back now with the kids. So now he's making a double claim. Number one, my wife passed away. Number two, these kids who I'm bringing back, these, these, these are our kids. These are our kids. So the Gemara says, What's the halacha? What's the halacha? Good. Varizu ve'ilubana. In tzarech lavi raya lo alishu v'lo alabanim. Meisav ve'ilubana. Maybe raya alabanim. So in that case, he has to bring a proof that genealogically these kids are fit, right? Because again, remember, we have no way of knowing if his claim is correct or not. Ve'ilu maybe raya ala isha, but he doesn't have to bring a raya that his wife passed away. Okay. But nor does he have to bring a raya, of course, that his wife is miyuches, as Rashi points out. He doesn't have to bring a raya on his wife's yichus. Because halacha lemaisa, because they got married before she, before they left, the pashtas her yichus was was established. Isha nasasi b'medina sayam hare hizu. The woman I married overseas, right? This is her. So so just to now another case. In this case over here, he's marrying another woman overseas. Marrying another woman overseas. He comes back with wife number two, right? And ultimately, again, he says, this is the wife I married overseas, and these are her kids. So, ultimately, again, he has to bring a raya for the wife, right? In other words, that the wife is, when we say bring a raya, what we're talking about over here is bring a raya that the wife is genealogically fit, right? And ultimately, but we don't have to bring a raya about the kids. Now, why don't we have to bring a raya about the kids? Ultimately, again, because remember, since the mother is alive, right? As long as you bring a raya about the mother, the kids are going to be following after the mother. And therefore, halach halamaisa, as long as you have a genealogical shtempel on the mother, the kids are good as well. Mesa ve'elubana. Again, I will say, so the last case is, what happens if he claims, I married this woman overseas, right? She passed away overseas, and these are her kids. So tzarek lahavi raya ala isha v'yal habanim. In that case, you have to bring a raya both about the woman as well as about the kids. Good. So the Gemara says, Amra barafuna, the kulun bikrucha machara, as I just mentioned before. In all of these cases, when we say that as long as we know the mother, either because Ruben married her before he went overseas, or he married her overseas, but he brings a raya ultimately again, that halacha says she is genealogically fit. Once we ascertain the genealogical fitness of the mother, the kids are good to go, right? What's the case? The case is where the kids are young enough that they're following after her. So because of that, halacha lemaisa, halacha lemaisa, that's enough of a shtempel.